Hi, welcome back to Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, the weekly series about varnish technology presented to you in two minutes or less. I'm Thais, I'm the technical evangelist here at Varnish Software. And in this episode, we'll talk about basic authentication and how to use varnish as an authentication gateway to handle that basic authentication. As always, I'll put two minutes on the timer and tell you all about it. You may know basic authentication from the following username and password prompt in your browser, but in fact, it's the result of an unauthorized request that results in a response containing a 401 unauthorized status code and a www authenticate response header containing the basic keyword to indicate that the server requires basic authentication. A way to tackle this is by adding the authorization request header, including the basic keyword and then the payload, where in fact the payload is nothing more than a base64 encoded string containing the username, a colon separator and a password. And in this case, that's admin as the username, secret as the password. While base64 encoding is not really that secure, as long as you use HTTPS to transmit the payload, you'll be fine. However, Varnish won't cache if it sees an authorization request header. It's part of the built-in VCL behavior, and as soon as the authorization header is spotted, Varnish will bypass the cache by issuing a return pass in the VCL code. A way of circumventing this standard behavior is by writing your own VCL code and intercepting the authorization header and matching it to the value that you'd expect. You can then choose to return a synthetic 401 if the password and the username doesn't match the expected values, which will trigger the VCL synth subroutine and you can intercept whatever response comes in and check if it has a 401 status code. If it does, you can add WW authenticate response header and use the basic keyword to initialize basic authentication. I admit, this is not the best solution. While easy to get started, after a while it will become a burden to maintain all the usernames and passwords. Every time a change happens, you need to change the VCL and it's there in plain text, so it's not that secure. A better way would be to recycle the htpasswd file that is generated by Apache. This is a lot more secure to operate and you can then leverage vmod basic auth, which is an open source varnish module that handles these files. Here's the VCL code you need to get it working. The first thing you need to do is import the basic auth vmod and then in VCL receive, you can then again intercept a request, but use basic auth.match as a function where the first argument is the password file containing all the data and where the second argument is the header you want to inspect, in this case, the authorization header. That was it. As you can see, you can turn Varnish into an authentication gateway and intercept incoming requests with basic authentication, analyze usernames and passwords, match them to expected values, and ensure that caching can still take place despite of the authentication. This was an example of basic authentication. There's plenty of other ways Varnish can serve as an authentication gateway, and we'll cover those in future episodes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you back next week with more content presented to you in two minutes or less.